I predict that in this lecture we will be looking at predicting the future. Just over 400 years ago, a man called Nostradamus made a prediction about this year. In fact, he predicted that this year the world would end. But it didn't. In fact, we would have been surprised if it had. In fact, we wouldn't have been here. But there was another prediction also made concerning this year, and that had to do with the planets. In fact, it was a prediction based on the movement of the Earth around the Sun. It was a prediction that there would be an eclipse. And that did happen. And we would have been surprised if it hadn't. In fact, we'd have been very annoyed because some of us booked hotel rooms. And that's the subject of this lecture. How can we predict the future? What is predictable about the future? Will some things always be a surprise? Or is there some element of predictability in nature? And we'll also see that by being a little bit unpredictable ourselves, we can help ourselves stay alive. Now, being able to predict things will be quite useful. Many of us have been stuck in traffic and wish that we weren't, and wish that we could predict not only the traffic, but the weather in the place we were going. And even financial markets, that would be a wonderful thing to be able to predict. Well, 200 years ago, when the Royal Institution was founded, everybody thought the universe ran like a well-oiled clock, a little bit like these toys. Marvellous. And a bit like a pendulum. That's a reliable thing. Swings backwards and forwards. We know that another swing is due. We can predict what this thing's going to do. And a bit like the swinging of planets around the sun. Like the eclipse. Even like trying to predict a bus. Buses come along, say, every 20 minutes. If you've been waiting 10 minutes, you know, in a few minutes, well, you're more than likely to have a bus come along. So we use this type of prediction all the time. But other things, very simple things, like a coin, seem very unpredictable. Heads or tails? Tails. Could have been heads, though. So what is it that makes some things predictable and some things unpredictable? Well, to answer this, we have to go on a journey from order and predictability through to chaos and unpredictability. Like a volunteer. Your name is? Tim. Just stand there, please, Tim. So, Tim, what we're going to do, we have this pendulum that swings backwards and forwards, very predictable. I'm going to connect another pendulum on the bottom. So could you come down here and just connect this on? Just put that wing back on. That's it. Great. So tin. Stand back, hold on to the end of the pendulum, and let it go. OK, what Tim did, just connected one pendulum on the bottom of another. And now you see, well, it's certainly not as regular as before. In fact, it's beginning to look a bit unpredictable. 
So I'll just try and catch this. Now we're going to connect another couple of pendulums with a bar. Tim, could you come and connect these? That's it. Well, what do you think, Tim? Think he deserves a head? Okay, see what you can do, letting it go from even higher. Oh. He seems to be enjoying it. That is very unpredictable. Thank you very much, Tim. So what we've seen, we've connected together one, two, three pendulums. The more we connected together, the more unpredictable things became. The harder it was to predict what was going to happen to any one of these pendulums. But how does this fit into our picture of the clockwork universe? After all, there we have two, three, four, five planets. And they're all going around the same sun. Well. This was the question that the King of Sweden wanted to address about a hundred years ago. He was interested in knowing, well, what's going to happen to the planets that are going around the sun? Knowing what we know today, what position will they be in in a year, two years, ten years, two hundred years' time? Now, people had Newton's laws. So they thought, Newton's laws, Newton's equations, all we have to do is solve them. You can solve them for two planets, quite easy. Three planets must be, well, a little bit harder, but surely with a big enough calculator you could do it. So given that the King of Sweden had put up some prize money, a lot of people started to really have a go at this calculation, to work out what all of the planets will be doing in a year's time. But they found the calculation very hard. In fact, it became apparent it was practically impossible. And that was the situation. Nobody collecting the prize money, nobody knowing what would happen to the planets. Until this man came along. This is Henri Poincaré, French mathematician. Now, Poincaré wasn't very good at school. He got zero in drawing. But he was actually really quite good at maths. And he decided, instead of trying to solve Newton's equations for a year's time, ten years' time, that he take a step back and look at the problem in a slightly different way. He realized that what the King of Sweden was really asking was, is the solar system going to remain stable? Are the planets going to remain stable around the sun? That was the important information to get out of the problem. Because he realized that although everybody thought that the universe was behaving in a regular clockwork way, very much like this orrery, which is based on clockwork mechanisms showing planets going around the sun. He realized that things weren't as simple as that. 